Hey guys, welcome back to another not-so-exciting episode of Battle for Bikini Bottom. I'm just joking. It's always exciting. But let's head on into Jellyfish Fields, our first actual level, let's call it. As soon as we enter, we will be introduced to a very hilarious intro. I love this intro. It's so good. It's so good. It's... Ah, I'll let it speak for itself. green hills of Jellyfish Fields a place to experience nature at its most raw and sometimes a bit tender from the stings. Squidward, are you okay? No, I'm not okay, you barnacle head. Do I look like I'm okay? Well, your nose does look pretty big. I mean, bigger than usual because it's usually pretty big. And you look clammy. And oh my gosh, you're bald! <laughs> I've always been bald, but now I'm stung all over. Well, according to the Jellyfisher Field Manual, severe jellyfish stings can be treated effectively by applying a thick layer of King Jellyfish Jelly to the affected areas. <laughs> King j j Jellyfish! Well, I guess you're off to scale Spork Mountain and die a horrible death under the vicious tentacles of King Jellyfish. <laughs> I'll stay here, balled up here in excruciating pain. You do that! Don't worry, Squidward! I'll bring back that King Jellyfish jelly for you to rub all over yourself. That doesn't sound dirty at all. Welcome to Jellyfish Fields. Beautiful. Great level. I very much enjoy it as a starting level for the game. We'll be introduced to our very first enemy here. He walks up to you, swings his sword. Nothing bad. Just hit him in the face. He's dead. Ka-ching. Profit. Also, these jellyfish can hurt you, so watch out for that. I didn't know that until really late into the game, and one killed me on my first playthrough. It was very embarrassing. Uh, let's not have that happen again. So... First off, I'm just going to be... Oh, this is goo! It's not water, it's goo. And it kills you. So you, no one can swim in it. Now, we have a teleport box up here. It's basically a f method of fast travel through levels. It's very helpful, especially for backtracking, and it makes getting through levels so much easier. Having to walk through these levels without it, it would, it would be really annoying really fast. If you want some nice shinies up here, there is a, you can jump on these tiki heads and jump on this and you get a good chunk of shiny things here and like a pro, bubble bounce down, get some more shiny things. Now, like I've already stated, they're not that important, but you might want to have just a little bit of a supply so you don't have to grind too much later on or just completely avoid grinding in the aftermath. Now we're going to take this side route here, just to get a sock for us. There's a sock down here in this tunnel. Now, there's a bunch of shiny stuff in front of you. You may want to jump off into the abyss. Don't. <laughs> That's for later. You jump off into the abyss and you'll die. Another thing I learned through my first playthrough. There is a lot of mistakes that I made through my first playthrough that I'm hoping I don't on this one. Now, this is our first experience with a clam coming up. These are what are going to be asking us for shiny things. So make sure you have enough. It's about, I think, 125. Yep, it's 125 clams. And you pay him, he takes your clams, and a ship drops down planks to build the bridge. Perfectly. That plane driver is the best plane driver in the whole world. Now, we're going to be introduced to a new enemy. These are your checkpoints. When you die, you will respawn here. Don't worry. We have a new enemy coming up, and we'll get a nice little cutscene for that enemy. If I am correct, maybe I'm horribly wrong. I think I'm horribly wrong. Yeah, I guess I'm horribly wrong. I'm sorry, guys. No new enemy yet. But up here, we have... You can actually use those tikis that I was breaking to get up there, but there's nothing much up here. This is a freeze fruit. It will freeze the lake and allow us to get over, but only Patrick can get across it. So there's not really much that we can do with it right now until we can backtrack here with Patrick. And like I stated before, those 
uh, the teleport box will be very helpful helpful for us later on in the level to get Patrick back here. So across the lake, you'll notice a little island. We stomp here, we get some barrels, some Donkey Kong barrels. Easy way to cross the river. If you want, you can totally skip this and get the ice thing as Patrick and just walk across the frozen lake as Patrick, but we're already here. We already have SpongeBob and it's not hard to jump across those barrels. So, but if you are having trouble with the barrels, it's okay. And you can just use Patrick to get across. But for now, we're gonna get it as SpongeBob because I am awesome at the platformings and head on up these staircases. Now, these mines here, we just wanna, wow, just wanna stick to the right, and you should be fine. Uh, the, the ball doesn't, it always rolls down the same path, it never rolls down the right, so as long as, as long as you're on the right, you'll be fine. Hey, Gary, up here. What's shaking? Wow. wow, a bungee jump for a golden spatula. I must be in heaven. This is your first experience with bungee jumping. Now, th these will be in the game often. It's something that you'll want to get used to very quickly. It's not too hard. You jump on it, you go down. You can get a little bit of an extra dip distance if you press the X button. So what you want to do is jump down and grab that golden spatula. I'm going to grab the rest of the shiny objects just so I have a little bit extra in my inventory. And there you go, the first golden spatula of the level. Now, one thing that's to note that's interesting about this game is that I could be wrong, but every single character in the, this game is voiced by the actual voice actor, aside from Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man. Uh, the person who voiced Mer Mermaid Man and Mr. Krabs wasn't actually available for recording when this game came out. So they had to find someone else to do the voice for those two characters, because the person who does Mr. Krabs also does Mermaid Man. Now here is where the new enemy is. <laughs> this enemy is known as Ham Mer. It's spelled, it's spelled just like it sounds. SpongeBob gets his little quote in about it. The uh, enemy's not too hard, just dodge his hammer smashing down. It'll create a little shockwave uh, that can damage you from a distance, but it's nothing too hard to avoid. So basically, just walk up to him, smash him, and he dies in one hit. Uh, most enemies in the game will die from one hit until you get into the later levels where they become a pain in the butt and they take more hits. But we get some stuff to help us with the harder enemies anyways, so it's not enemies in this deck. See what I mean? Get that little shockwave, knocks you across the level, and half the time knocks you off the map and really annoys you. Down here we have some more shiny things. I'm gonna grab them. This is for the fun of it. Don't need them, but you can grab them if you want. Why not? Now, we can't, this is going to be part of our backtracking episode because we can't get this yet, so we're gonna have to come back to this level to get that sock later on. But we, what we can get is if we head up here, around the corner, there are a few more special socks for us to get. Now, I'm, it's been so long since I let's played, it's, it's really hard for me to continuously talk. Like you notice there, there's a big, long thing of silence. And it's just because sometimes I can't think of things to talk about, which is something I'm definitely going to have to fix, something I'm definitely going to have to focus on. But for now, there may be points of silence just because I can't think of things to talk about. Like right now, I'm literally talking about not knowing what to talk about. That's how much I don't know what to talk about. Now, watch out here. There's this, this hammer guy can easily knock you off the edge. I usually wait for him to hit once, and then you'll be fine. But... These hammer guys can be a very big pain in the butt. If you're not careful, they'll knock you off the side of the map. If you want, you can go for that shiny thing. It's not really worth it, um, but I'm going to go for it just to show you guys a little hint here. If you watch your shadow, you can e easily see your shadow, and it makes it really easy to jump across platforms in this game. Uh, though things can still get a little bit sketchy like that. I almost fell. I could feel it. I could feel it in my thumbs. That's the power of a gamer's thumb, so you can feel when you're about to fall. Now, this path here leads to the big fossilized jellyfish. I'm gonna believe that that's like 
it's the biggest jellyfish ever made, and it's just like fossil, fossil, fossilized. It's been put into stone because this looks like a jellyfish. It, it literally looks. Yeah. yeah, see, it's it's basically a sign that says jellyfish fields, but I want to believe that this is actually a giant jellyfish, and it's been fossilized into this rock formation. Now this will bring us back, but we don't want to continue on the path just yet. We're going to jump onto this jelly tree thing again. And behind us is a ledge, and in this ledge area we have another... Be careful there, you can possibly miss your jump. Um, don't go straight into the water because it will kill you, even tiny ponds like this. There's a sock up here, and that is about it for this area. We can head, continue heading along the path up this rock here. This will teeter-totter. Just let it sit down. Sorry, I had to like swallow it there. It's so gross, isn't it? You can hear me swallowing and stuff. Just continuously jump, it'll make it easier to get across it. Activate the teleport box, which will make it easier for us to get down. And this is our first introduction to the Duplate Accrutron 1000. I totally said that wrong. This thing will constantly spit out enemies until you break it, so you really want to focus on it. So you can just walk right past these enemies. If they get in your way, just. Damn. Dead. Done. Boom. Um, it will explode, so don't get close to it. It can also be really annoying because it could explode and it looks like the explosion's gone, but you jump back towards it and you still get hit by like an invisible explosion. It happens all the time. You'll probably see it at some point in this playthrough. So it's something that you want to watch out for. Give it a few seconds before you walk back towards it. But there's a button behind it. You hit that and this will bring us to the next area. And coming up, we have our first experience with character changing. Now, there's three different characters in the game. You have SpongeBob, Sandy, Whoa, and Patrick. Mermaid Man, I have all your comics and toys and mail. Hey, huh? W what? Oh, yeah, it's that Sponge Kid. And now, what was I supposed to tell you? That Patrick is surrounded by robots and needs my help. Huh? Oh. No, I think it had something to do with massaging my feet. Well, if massaging your feet will save Patrick, then massage I must. Help! They're making me hit myself! <laughs> massaging your feet isn't working. I think I'd better try a more direct approach. By clipping my toenails? Here I come, Patrick! So, there, there's a sock on this slide that we have to get, it's to the right, you'll see a ledge and you want to jump to it. I'll, basically I'm going to show you here, but just in case you're playing along with me, be careful because it can jump up on you if you're not careful. These slide things are really annoying. Your jump is right here, and there's going to be another sock at the end of, there's the sock you need, and at the very end of this jump, you're going to want to double jump here up to this point. Now, oh wow, I actually got it. That can actually be a pain in the butt to get. The first time I played through it took me about four tries to get it. Uh, if you're having trouble, you can get this box and hop back in and bam, you're back at the top. Make sure you get this on your way down or you're going to be stuck and you won't be able to get up there. If you do need to get up there, you can go to Patrick's Dilemma and click X to take the taxi and it'll bring you back to the top of the cliff. Um, I think. I'm not quite sure on that, so, but that's your best bet if you do miss that box and you need to go back down that slide to get that sock, because it can be a really big pain in the butt to get. You have to, like, hit the edge of the slide just in the right way, and then, like, double jump and perfectly hit it. Like, you notice I didn't even, like, land on it, I just fell off, off it, which can be a pain in the butt. Now, we have a little battle arena here, our first experience with battle arenas. It's not too difficult. Jump up to the duplicate, duplicate, the dupe -du dupes That's what I'm going to call them from now on. The dupe -du dupes and basically turn them off. It's there's a button behind. Blow them up. There's a button behind them. You got to click the button. Once all three buttons are clicked, um, I don't even think you have to kill the robots. Once all three buttons are clicked, then all of these are destroyed and all the buttons are clicked, then you're good to go. And you can grab Patrick and say, Patrick, he'll give you a spatula. And basically, after that, you unlock Patrick and play as him. But before we can continue on with Patrick, we'll have to head back to the beginning where that ice thing was that I was showing you. Uh, 
uh, it's a quick backtrack just because we, we grab those teleport boxes, which will make our life so much easier. There we go. There's Patrick. All safe and sound, because we destroyed all the dupa de boxes. Dupa de boops. Dupa de boops. Dupa de boops. Look at that. Quiet again. Just can't think of things to say. I guess I could talk about SpongeBob because I'm playing. Oh. Woo. Thank goodness you're safe, Patrick. Well, of course, SpongeBob. Why wouldn't I be? Well, the robot and the. Oh yeah, I found this for you. I don't know what it is, but it looks important. Thanks, Patrick. I tell you what, all that running around has left me pooped. Why don't you continue on for a bit? Okay. And bam, we have control, Patrick. So. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I guess I could talk about Spongebob, uh, <laughs> since it is, like, a Spongebob-themed game. And speaking of how much I played Sponge- well, not played, how much I watched Spongebob when I was younger, there's just so much- it was on TV all the time when I was a kid, it was like, it's like the Spongebob block, and it's like 10 episodes of Spongebob in a row! All day, every day! Um, I also really loved uh, Fairly Odd Parents. That was another show that I really enjoyed growing up. Um, another one that was on really often was Jimmy Neutron, though I never really had a huge love for that show. It was still, I still watch it every once in a while, but I was a huge Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob guy. And Dragon Ball Z. Basically, basically all the normal kid shows, you know? Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, SpongeBob SquarePants. You know what I mean. <laughs> so basically, we wanna we wanna hop back into this box, and right around the corner is where that ice block was. This is back at the very beginning of the game. You can't like tell where we are. This is back at the very beginning of the game, and we can hop over and grab that ice thing and use that to grab Patrick's sock. I don't know why. Like we're playing as Patrick, and we're collecting these socks to give to Patrick. It's like why don't you why don't you just take the sock? It's it's yours. Why do you give it back to SpongeBob to give back to you? I never got it, but whatever. It's a game. That's how it works. It's a collectathon. And a great one of that. Not anything outstanding or amazing, but it is a fun collectathon, especially for a licensed game. But we're gonna head back basically to where we got Patrick and continue on our path. Well we're gonna learn about a new ability that Patrick has solely that will be used often throughout the game. I'm breaking these guys for no reason, because they're in my way. Loading screens, loading screens. Gonna kill myself because of loading screens. Just kidding. Don't worry. Don't don't kill yourself, kids. In the box. There we go. But yeah, um, I watch SpongeBob all the time. I. Um, I kind of lost interest a little. It seems like me and many other people, oh god, me and many other people started to lose interest after the movie. Um, maybe it was just because of the age group that I was with and we were kind of growing up, or if that was just a kind of like hiatus point, not that great for SpongeBob. But right after the movie, things started to like die down. I stopped watching it. Um, I started doing other things, which included video games. Um, yes, this is a watermelon. Pick it up, and you can throw it at crap. Uh, after a while, it will disappear, so you only have a limited amount of time to pick it up and throw it. You can also pick up the tiki's. You can throw them at other. I wasn't done with that. <laughs> you can pick up the tiki's, throw them at other tiki's. Bam. And bam. So we can't. This is a bus station. So if you want SpongeBob back, click the right. Uh, R1 button, bam, Spongebob. Press again, bam, Patrick. It's a really nice way of changing characters. It works really well. Makes things a little bit faster, especially in later levels where you have to do a lot of backtracking. It's like, play Spongebob, backtrack, play as Patrick, backtrack, play as Spongebob, backtrack. But we can't bring this up ledges, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it up the ledge and then grab it so we can hit this button up here. Now this is a Patrick teeter-totter. We're gonna use it to launch ourselves over to the other side of the map. And kabooby! Kabooby. Kaboobies. Boobies. Boobies are cool. <laughs> What's wrong with me? 
Welcome to the Thunder Tiki. This is basically your TNT of the game. Touch it, it explodes. You can also pick it up and throw it. Tiki's are going to be our way of getting very high combos hey, later into the game. Ahead. Watch. The rock is talking to me. Oh, mighty rock, I am at your command. Down here, you big pink lummox. Oh, hi there, Mr. Plankton. Are you going to vaporize me today? So very tempting. Unfortunately, I found myself in the undesirable position of having to assist you. I was in an undesirable position yesterday, and now my neck hurts. <laughs> Heed my words, my large future minion. Go into Jellyfish Cave. Follow the instructions on the signs that you see. At the end of the caves, you'll still be a big pink idiot, but you'll know enough to help defeat the robots and get me back into the chum bucket. <laughs> well, then will you vaporize me? I might spare your life so I can force you to work in my sweatshop making low quality design and knock off wallets. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, so you can button smash just like you can with SpongeBob with Patrick. It's what you would have expected. And we open up a door. And this is where we're going to be ending off today. Um, I'm feeling 20 minute episodes are actually pretty good. Um, I was going to go with 10, but 10 was definitely... I realized during the first episode, like halfway through it, I was like, there is no way I can do 10 minute episodes because <laughs> it's just... I could not even get through like the beginning of the game. So we're going to end it off here. We'll find out what's in the mystery cave tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, but you know when the next episode comes out. Whenever I decide that these things are scheduled. Also, anyone who's been posting comments and questions and whatnot, um, I'm recording all of these in session. Uh, I'm probably going to record, like, three of them in session. So I won't be getting your questions until about the fourth episode. So thank you all, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.